Last question for today um, was, Akil, how to best assess strategy performance? The suitability of a strategy will depend on you or your client's risk appetite. However, I would be interested to hear your views on which metrics you consider to be important and the minimum values for those metrics, which would allow you to go live with a strategy. Metrics such as profit factor, max drawdown, expectancy, um, and return per year, etc. Now, let me ask you guys this first. What, when you go through back testing um, and, and you look at strategy development, what metrics do you look at the most? What, what metrics do you favor? Which are relevant? Which are irrelevant? Consistent equity curve, and I, I think that's a that is a very overlooked one, Andrew. Where because a, an equity curve isn't necessarily a metric, right? It's not you, an equity equity curve isn't a number, um, but it's a story. And I personally think it's the most important story you can have, right? It is it is it, it's it's cool to know the ultimate destination. Um, I think it's more important to see how you how you get there and probably the, the worst analogy in the world. But it's the difference between like this. Right. What if what if I told you that your ultimate destination was a million bucks? How many how many of you guys would take me up on that offer where I gave you a map? I said, hey, at the end of this map, you're a millionaire. Now, what if I showed you the journey and throughout that journey, it meant getting your arms and legs bit off or ripped off by alligators and cobras and gorillas? Would you still be interested in that million bucks when you're armless and legless, right? Probably not. So it's an equity curve is very important because, and, and this this is this is where you know, this this is the 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 I don't I, well, I don't really pay attention, but like you guys ever hear about curve fitting, right? Curve fitting is like you know, so let's let's say we did a, a trader workshop, right, and we were selling this strategy, and. Right. We wanted to make this strategy seem amazing. So it's like, hey, guys, I had a 200 percent return this month. Right. You, you guys have seen the video, the, the guy that, that comes up on my YouTube video, the little ad thing where he's like, I got this broken arm, but I still made 200 percent in the market this month. Right. That idiot. Um, curve fitting is when you basically take a specific section out of your equity curve to show the optimal results. Right. So it's like if 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 I did a if I had 10 years of back testing data. Right. And there was like a four month period where I caught fire, could not lose Jamal Murray type of stuff. Right. He just dropped like 50 points again last night for you guys watching the NBA playoffs. He's averaging 47 points in the playoffs over the last three games. It's crazy. Um, but if I had a hot streak and what I did was I took out everything in my equity curve except for that. What would I say? I don't forget. I must have said that that two month period. And I said, hey, guys, here's how I did a 200% return in just two months. Now, I'm not lying, am I? I'm just not giving you the full story, right? You see it a lot of time with, uh, you see it with reporters, speaking of, of sports, right? Where a person will, 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 will say a quote and they'll only take a specific part of the quote without giving you the full context. Where someone will be like, Tom Brady is the worst quarterback. I think Tom Brady is the worst quarterback in the world. Only if I was living on a world where lies are the truth, something like that, right? Or only if it was opposite day, right? And then in the headlines, Akil says, I think Tom Brady is the worst quarterback in the world. And you're like, well, you didn't, you didn't take the rest of the, right? Stuff like that. Right? So that's, that's what curve fitting is. You see, and... That's where you see a lot of people preaching these, these super secret strategies that make all this money. They're not lying. They're just taking a, the, the best, they're handpicking the best part of the strategy, not telling you about the rest. Um, in reality, right, that 200% return in that two month period could be followed up by a 100% drawdown. Before that, you could have been in a negative for like eight years, right? We all have good periods in our trading where things are just crazy, right? Unexpectedly crazy, but it's not necessarily the reality. 
what an equity curve shows you is the reality. It shows you the journey where you may have that 100% or you may, you may be able to make that million dollars, but it's going to cost you two arms and two legs. It's going to cost, you may make that 100% return, but it's going to cost you a 50% drawdown. And when you look at the whole story, you're like, I'm not willing to take a 50% drawdown or I'm not willing to, um, you know, daily chore people have seen this. or I'm not willing to go through three years of break even trading to make it to that fourth year that is excellent. Um, so I think I think that's a very underestimated, undervalued metric to look at. I guess it's not a metric, but a, a portion to look like. For me, it's the most important thing. Um, and that's partially because it, it also tell you can also see your drawdown, your return on investment. Um, so that's a good one. What, what, what else do you guys take a look at? Raymond says drawdown, return on investment year by year. Does anybody look at, at expectancy or profit factor? I don't think it's important. I know it's going to sound real weird, right? There, there go your headlines. A Kuehl doesn't think expectancy or profit factor is important. I don't think it's important in trading. In investing, it is, yes, assuming you're trading a single thing. Um, well, I don't, I'd rather look at the return on investment. I, I don't think, I mean, here, here's, here's my philosophy on it, right? An expectancy or a profit factor will tell you if something is profitable or not, right? If it's above one, it's going to be profitable. What else will tell you if it's profitable is your return on investment or your total PIP column, right? So it's not a metric that I think we use here in trading. It's a metric where if you're reading reports and whatnot, it's useful. If you're not actually taking the time to backtest something and do the work for yourself, it's important. You know, I take it back to like if you're just looking at like a, 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 a stock report and you see a 2.0 a, a profit factor, right? It gives you an idea. Okay, this, is, this has been profitable, right? But that's because you're not actually doing the work of testing it and, and whatnot. So I think it's a little bit different in our, in our situation. Same thing with expectancy. Expectancy tells you essentially the same thing as profit factor. If it makes money, right? We, we, we're going to be easy. If we do our work, we're easily going to be know, we're easily going to know if it makes money or not. So I don't think those numbers are, are too important when it comes to our situation and the fact that we're actually doing active backtesting instead of just kind of looking at different stocks or equities or whatnot and, and comparing results. It does make a difference if I, if, if I just said, hey guys, here are 10 pairs, you're not backtesting, here's a profit factor for each pair. It makes a difference there because now you can kind of be like, okay, Aussie Canada is better than Euro dollar, Euro dollar is worse than blah, blah, blah. Um, but in our in our kind of what we're doing active traders, it doesn't really make a difference. So I don't think those are important. Um, return on investment is the most important for me. What is that return on investment? I think that's an important one. Max drawdown is important as well, right? Return on investment is only as great as the max drawdown that it takes to achieve that return on investment. Again, I'm not interested in 100% return if it's going to take a 50% drawdown. I'd be much more interested in a 50% return that takes a 10% drawdown, something like that. So max drawdown is going to be different for every everybody. Um, for me, my personal max drawdown and for just my own trading is going to be 20%. My, now my max allowable drawdown is 30%. You always want to have that number a little bit bigger, but my max drawdown, I'd like to see something under 20%. I don't want to take more than 20% dip. Ideally, I don't want to take anything under 15, but you know, there are certain realities. I'm, I'm, I'm okay with a little bit more as long as it's not consistent. So for me, it's a 20%. I don't want to be underneath that. Um, back when I was managing money, double digits was a no. You couldn't go, I couldn't go under 10% or I guess above 10%. Return on investment, overall, I'd like to see, and I say overall because it's going to be a, a function of your entire portfolio, not an individual trading strategy. And I think when we look at things, we need to look at them Obviously, we're going to have the data from an individual pair or whatnot, but the bigger picture is putting them all together as a portfolio. That's where you're going to get your your, your true numbers. I'd like to see a 30% return. Really like 30, 35%, like a 35% return on investment as, as a total. That would be about a minimum for me. Um, 
win percentage for me personally, and the question was asking me for me personally, you guys can chime in if you want. Win percentage for me personally, um, above 40%. Um, 40% is kind of my cutoff for how bad I can be. Not not bad, it's a horrible way to say it, for how low my win percentage can be. I think once once I get under 40%, um, and I'm different now. This was years ago, so I'm, I'm, I'm more disciplined now, but I still don't think I'd be comfortable under 40%. I need to win a certain amount of time just to keep my morale up. Right? I go through the same thing as you guys, where on losing streaks, I start to question myself. I'm like, hey, am I really reading this right? Differences over the years, I, you know, my track record is is long enough where I can go back and I, there are many more positives that I can feed myself when that happens. So if you think about, I don't want to call it depression or whatnot, but you, you think about when you question yourself as, as being like, you, you guys ever, you ever, you ever, you ever hear the story of the good wolf and, and the bad wolf? Feed the good wolf. And I'll go back and get to your question before where it's like, same thing with like with, with positive thoughts, right? It's an old Indian tale where it's basically like there are two wolves, the shortest version possible. There are two wolves, two consciences, you know, two little people wolves on your shoulder. One is the good wolf, one is the bad wolf. The bad wolf is the one that tells you all these negative self-defeating thoughts. The good wolf is the one that tells you like positive thoughts. And as a human being or as a person, you have a choice on which one to feed, right? You have a plate, you can feed the bad wolf. So you can buy into those self-defeating thoughts where I'm never going to be good enough. I wasn't born for this, blah, 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 blah. The things that just beat you down and make you depressed. Or you can feed the good wolf, the one that motivates you and is, and is positive, right? The same thing happens in trading when you go through a drawdown, right? You go through a dark period of time where, you know, those negative, th those negative thoughts start to creep in. I think we've all been there, um, the difference with me and, and while I'm, while I, I still go through them. I'm still, I'm sure Jason Greystone still goes through them as well. The difference is I've got a long enough track record of good wolf food, I guess you could say, that it's easier for me to feed that good, good wolf than that bad wolf, right? Where many of you guys that are just searching out, starting off, you may have to search around for good wolf food, right? Because you're like, well, I don't, I just started, all I did was back testing, I never live traded, uh, Kiel's been telling me this, you know, maybe, right? And you, here at tier one, you have the opportunity to go to our traders on the platform and, and get help and motivation that way. That helps. But when you're on your own as a trader with no support system, where are you getting that food from? It's, it's extremely hard, right? For me, I can look back through performance and be like, okay, when did I start? Okay, yeah, I know what I'm doing. It's, it's, there's a lot more food available for me to grab. So I still go through those mental battles it's just easier for me to break out of them because I have a track record of breaking out of them. I have a track record of going through drawdowns every year and fighting out of them. And it always ends the same way, right? I always end up on the upside every single time. So it's easier for me to pull from those um, experiences versus someone that's new. Um, but I think 40% would be my breaking point where it's like under 40%, that's when things would get tough. Because that's just, it's just consistently getting beat down. And that's, that's, it's... I think that would be difficult for me. So those, so those would be my my numbers. Um, risk reward, I, I need a one to one. Um, I prefer more than one to one. I don't have any minimums aside from a one to one, and the cipher is an exception for even that. Um, but I don't, I don't have any, I don't have any minimums for risk reward underneath one to one. That's about it. Um, let me get back to a question that someone said. Uh, Andrew said this brings me to a question. Uh, this brings a question to mind. Do you think there is such thing as over tweaking a strategy? Yes. Uh, for example, we make the backtesting equity curve look great, but we had to make so many tweaks in the process that the strategy may not work at all in the future. I don't necessarily think it comes to a point where it doesn't work in the future, but remember my quote from earlier, is life free? No, life ain't free. There's always a sacrifice. So you can tweak, whenever you tweak something, whenever you change something, it's going to change something else. Was it butterfly effect? Is that it, right? Whenever you change one thing, it's going to change something else, right? So simple example. If I change, if, if, if I push my stop loss further back, my average stop loss further back, what I may gain is more winning trades. Right, I may gain more winning trades. Let's, let's do the the, the, exact, the the opposite. So if I if I move my stop loss down, right, what I'm doing is I'm telling myself I'm going to take 
a smaller hit on each losing trade, right? Would you guys agree? I'm going to reduce my risk, right? That's a, that's a good thing. Reducing risk. Yay, right? I've reduced my risk on any given trade. But what all, what, what's the sacrifice of doing that? What do I have to give up if I'm reducing my risk? I'm probably reducing my win rate as well, right? I'm giving myself less of a cushion. Some of those trades where it spiked just above and then reverse and you're like, whew, glad I had my stop loss there. Money, 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 baby, right? Some of those trades are now gonna be stopped out. So my win percentage is gonna take a hit. Now, the question we ask ourselves as traders is, well, is it worth it? And that's where your numbers come in handy, where it's like, is reducing my win percentage from 60 to 55 worth making more profits? And then that's where we have to find that balancing act. You see the same thing a lot with frequency, right? People add, add filters to increase their win percentage in most cases. But what they do is because they're more, let's say Andrew is more conservative, where it's like, okay, I, really, I want to take a really, really conservative approach because I'm sick of getting stopped out by these dumb little wicks and these false signals. I'm, 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 I need everything to line up, right? Sun and the moon, all the, all the solar system, all needs to line up for me to take a trade, right? Andrew may boost his win percentage by 10 points, 10 percentage points, right? He may go from 50 to 60, boom. He also may eliminate a quarter of his trading opportunities. Now, the question is this. Is the win percentage increase worth the lowering in frequency, right? Because we need frequency to be a trader, right? I worked with a trader once, right? Brilliant guy. He was a doctor from France. He's in Colorado. David Alcindor, the pro the, probably the, the smartest person i ever known. Um, so smart that I didn't understand what the hell he was saying. OG knows what I'm talking about. And he had a system that he, he was able to tweak until he got it to be like 90% accurate. But do you know what the problem was? There were only two trading opportunities a year that met all the requirements. And we were going over it in the mastermind group and he was teaching us and we're like, dude, you're crazy. Like, and we were looking at decoding it. And, 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 and we were going through it. Uh, smarter than Todd Brown? Uh, yeah, yeah. This guy is actually like, not, 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 just trading smart, like real life smart. I don't, I don't, I don't know how to say it. Like real, Todd Brown, I'm mean, Todd Brown. Real, Todd Brown is smart. This guy's like, I mean, he's a doctor. He was a doc, military doctor. He's a doctor. He's a smart. He's, he's, I mean, he's just very smart, very analytical. Yeah, probably the smartest person I've ever encountered. Um, too smart for me. But he he added so many tweaks and filters to his system to get it ninety percent correct that it only offered two trading opportunities a year. And, and we felt bad because he's doing this whole presentation. He's walking us through us. It's amazing. And we're, at the end of the day, we're basically like, like, dude, I love it. It's great. We'd love to package it, package it up. We'd love to code it and, and give it to our traders. But what are we going to do with two trading opportunities a year? Like, I think, I think we would all agree that you're probably going to make and again, it depends on how you set things up. You're probably going to make more money with a, a system that is 60% correct that offers 100 opportunities a year than a system that's 90% correct that offers two. Right? Frequency matters. And as you, as you make tweaks, filters, sometimes you're giving up that frequency. So it's always a, there's always a give and a take to it. And that's, that's, again, that's the beauty of the equity curve, right? When you change one thing, you can see the other thing, right? I would always show you this, you guys. We haven't done it in a while, but I'll show you the money management spreadsheet. We talk about aggressive versus conservative position sizing, right? And I, and I tell you that I, I don't take a lot of big dips in my trading equity curve. So I can be super aggressive with my position sizing. I can be so aggressive where I can, I can easily create a 600% return a year and, 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 and not go broke. It would also take my max drawdown much lower than like 20%. If my max drawdown is like 7%, 17%, my biggest drawdown, right? It's going to take it to like 60. So there's a danger in doing that. That's the, that's the give if you want to take. So yeah, that, that's, that's the balance that we, that we need to find in trading. And I think so many people don't see that balance. They just think that it's like, hey, I just do one thing and that's the, the fix. And before you know it, something else is, is, is tweaked.
I can't forget like the little, I don't remember the name, like you have little kid games like that where you push one button in, the other one pushes out on the other side, and you're like, damn it. <laughs> How do I get them both in at the same time? And the question and answer is you don't. You don't. So, whew, I felt like that was a good rant. Um, did, I, did, I, did I miss anything there or anything else you guys would like to add to that? I think I answered it all. I, I get sidetracked every once in a while. Ooh, it's worth it. Oh, 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 oh,